All right, uh, let's shift topics now uh, on something that will likely be on the minds of leaders across the globe. The biggest risks our world is facing in 2023. We're sharing a new list from the Eurasia Group, the political risk research and consulting firm. So at number three, what they call weapons of mass disruption. That is technology like artificial intelligence that can undermine trust and democracy. At number two, maximum Xi. They say Chinese leader Xi's unrivaled power in his own country could lead to dangerous mistakes. And the number said, and the report says the number one risk is rogue Russia, how it poses major threats to the United States, Europe, and beyond. The president and founder of Eurasia Group, Ian Bremmer, joins us now to discuss. Ian, good to see you. Good morning. So uh, let's talk about this. The la in this time last year, the war between Russia and Ukraine was weeks away. Now rogue Russia, you're saying, your report mm. is saying, is the number one threat. Why hasn't Russia's failure in the Ukraine war diminished that threat that it poses? No, it, the failure is increasing the risk because Russia is becoming the world's most powerful rogue state. They are diminished dramatically as a global power. Uh, Putin couldn't even show up at the G20 because he was going to be isolated and embarrassed by all of these other world leaders. Mm. But there's no way for him to back down. Um, I mean, it's not like he can go to the status quo ante and said, oh, my mistake. No, no, no. NATO's already expanded. Mm. Ukraine's much stronger. Uh, the Europeans have already cut them off in terms of gas flows. you got to build those pipelines someplace else. It'll take a decade. So any way you look at it, Putin is in an incredibly difficult position, but he's got 6,000 nukes. So what's he going to do? If he can't continue the war in Ukraine, he's going to take it someplace. And increasingly what that means is the war is going to hit NATO. Ooh. It's going to be asymmetric attacks like espionage and uh, like cyber attacks, pipeline, fiber. Uh, Russia thinks that they've been fighting NATO for the last year. NATO has said, no, 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 the war's in Ukraine. Increasingly yeah. it's going to be hard to keep that in the box. That has to be the top risk that we're facing this year. Speaking of that war in Ukraine, how do you anticipate it ending? Yeah, I wish we could anticipate it ending. Um, you know, Ukraine has had, the last year, their GDP has, has contracted by 40%. Russia's only been 4%. Russia's increasingly going to see their own economy take the kind of hit that Iran has been taking, another smaller rogue state yep. in the Middle East, for the last decade. Um, what that means is that Russia doesn't have a military that's capable of continuing to fight and win the war in Ukraine. Instead, they're going to be seen by NATO as the principal danger on the global stage. But that's not an end to the war. Right. It's an expansion of the war. I mean, at least in 2022, We've all focused on Zelensky, the bravery of 44 million Ukrainian people. Right. But, but we've kept the war in Ukraine. Yeah. In 2023, we're not going to be able to say that anymore. It's not a cold war with Russia. It's really a hot war with Russia. Talking about China, I mean, the main tenant of Chinese governance is focusing on its internal politics and letting other companies, other countries focus on their own internal affairs. How do you think that China, especially under Xi Jinping, will... Will, will be a risk to the global geopolitical landscape if it says that it really wants to kind of do its own thing and let other countries do theirs. You know, the funny thing is the China risk is a little bit like the Russia risk in the sense that it centers on one guy that has extraordinary amounts of power, didn't used to be true in China, doesn't have checks and balances, isn't getting great expertise the way he used to. That allows him to make big mistakes. We've because already he's surrounded seen by yes men? Because he's surrounded by yes men and because he's capricious in the decisions that he makes. Zero COVID, which was the win for China for the last two years, suddenly it's gone. And as a consequence, China is like it was in 2020, once again the epicenter of global COVID with no transparency with the rest of the world about any new variants that are coming and how many cases they have and how many people are dying. Well, what happens if those sorts of health decisions get replicated in economic decisions inside China, national security decisions inside China. The reason Russia is such a risk is because Putin made the single biggest misjudgment of any leader on the global stage since the wall came down in 1989. That's the kind of leadership we're increasingly seeing yeah. in China today, but a lot more powerful China than it was back in Mao days, which the last time you saw a leader that was that powerful. So Ian, let me ask you quickly before we go. At number seven, you have a divided U.S. You expect polarization in the United States to grow this year, and you call the United States one of the world's most dysfunctional democracies. 
What are the geopolitical risks of a dysfunctional democracy that is the United States, in your words? Thankfully, they are lower than a lot of people think. This is a don't panic risk. The fact that the United States is at the bottom of the list, even though we're the most powerful country in the world, really tells you that even when you have leaders that make big mistakes, those mistakes are constrained. People stop them from happening, whether it's the military or judiciary or rule of law, transparency, all of those things. The risks that are really at the top of this report this year aging dictators and tech bros. By the way, increasingly, there's some overlap in those two categories. Those are the places where you get have things that go bump in the night and they affect all of us when we wake up. Ian Brimmer, thank you so much. It's not just your knowledge, it's your passion as well. We appreciate you. Hey, good to see you guys.